Welcome aboard. I'm Ted Everingham, and this is Great Lakes Log from WMTV at the Gross Point War Memorial. Welcome to the Mackinac Room at Historic Bay Club. As a matter of fact, this room was pretty much the clubhouse in 1929 or so when it was dedicated. Boy, a lot of stories have been told here, and they get bigger, the winds get stronger, the waves get higher, temperatures are colder. Great stories told in the Mackinac Room. We're going to talk today about the 2013 Bell's Beer Bayview Mackinac Race coming up in July. This is the first of two preview programs. The next one will be in the summer. And with us to help are the two men who know more about this year's race than alive. Commodore Kent Colpart. Commodore, thank you. Thank you for having us. And Chairman Carl Billmeyer. Carl. Ted, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Oh, it's great to have you here. You guys have both sailed this race a number of times. Commodore? I've sailed the race about 19 times. 19? Yes. Ever win? I have, on two occasions. Both with uh, the boat Burden. Ah. The Great Burden, now off in the West Coast? It is. Yeah. The boat uh, was very successful here in the Great Lakes, both in the Mackinac's and the Circuit. And uh, the boat was sold and is now out in, I believe it's San Diego, California. Now, last I knew it was. Carl, you and I go back even farther than my time with Commodore Copart. Don't even want to mention it. Don't want to mention it. 26 years in the Mackinac race, uh, four beyond that. And how many have it won? Uh, six firsts. One uh, first overall, two third or thirds overall, seven seconds and six thirds. I've right, got yeah, twenty. Yeah. I got twenty twenty uh, places out of twenty six races. So That's not bad. I think it's pretty good. Good for you. I've had good boats to race on. Now this is this is a different perspective. Now this race has been going on since what? Nineteen twenty five. Yep. Eighty ninth sailing, something like. When is this year's race, Carl? On July twentieth. And it'll, it'll start in Lake, Lower Lake Huron, race up to Mackinac Island, finish anywhere uh, on Sunday, Sunday evening, Monday, the 22nd. Twenty is the uh, party at, uh, hosted by the uh, Grand Hotel. Right. And if all works well, we'll get everybody on their way back home on the 24th. One hopes. Most <laughs> of the boats, most of the boats, most years finish sometime during the daylight of Monday. Fair statement? Yes. So that's what we would expect this year. You're going to have ideal weather. I won't even ask who's in charge of weather. I hope you're right. Yeah. It's a grand old event. People always want to know about the courses. There are two courses here? Uh, yes, there are. There Tell are. us about the courses, Commodore. We have uh, the historic short course, which has been the, uh, the course predominantly sailed for most of the years. And we also have the Cove Island course again this year. Uh, the courses that we had last year, uh, the Board of Governors has, has made a conscious decision and, and, uh, to not change the format of the race for the next, uh, we have three more years left, this being the, the f uh, second year of a five-year commitment okay. to try to keep the race uh, with some consistency uh, and hold it the similar every year. So what's the difference in the two courses? I think we can look at the chart here and see where the, the boats go shore course up the Michigan shore and the Cove Island course over to, of all places, Cove Island in Ontario. Right. Around a buoy that's Bayview's buoy, it's not a government buoy, right? Correct. We place it there ourselves. What's the difference in distance? Uh, about, about 60 miles. The long course to Cove Island is roughly 260, 260 naughty, or, um, statute, statute miles. Road miles. And road miles, if you will, yes. And the short course is roughly 200 road miles. So I would guess that bigger boats tend to go on the short course and smaller boats on the, on the Cove Island course. Smaller boats tend to sail on the short course. But who decides where I race my sailboat? 
right now the way it is set up and way we've done it in the last couple of years it is up to the skipper to decide which course he would like to race on uh, he gets to choose when he enters um, so there is so last year we had uh, roughly 80 boats or so that wanted to go to Cove Island when the class splits come out uh, a little bit closer to race time uh, there are people that will adjust themselves right. uh, they play the game which is normal um, and, and we may lose a few people on the uh, Cove Island course, but overall it's, it's split about 60-70 uh, on the uh, long course and the rest of them 180-190 uh, boats go on a short course. So way more on the short course? Yes. And under the old rules, which were less permissive, boats were required depending on the speed characteristics to go to one course or another, it was more or less 55 45 percent something like that right yes so this is this is favoring this is the a, short course. this is favoring the short course uh, and we've had a move uh, people tend to want to try w the boats the the guys that have a, a little bit more involved in this or more stake in the race they like to go to long course they don't really care if it's one day or two days or three days uh, they're fine with it uh, we're getting a lot of uh, cruising uh, boats that are joining in now and are doing shore course. So they do kind of like to get up to the island where they can enjoy the activities on the island. And so it makes it, gives kind of both groups uh, a good chance to get there and enjoy it. So. Well, they're all your customers, right, Commodore? Well, they are. And uh, that brings us to a great point. One of the, in the resolution the board made, um, we chose specifically not to make splits to, to dictate where boats go. We're trying to listen to our customer and find out what race they really want to sell. Because uh, traditionally, the Cove Island is not the original Bayview uh, Mackinac race course that was thought up some time um, right. not too long ago. So uh, historically, uh, you know, we really don't know which, I mean, we know which one historically is the, is the main race, but which one is really the one that everybody wants to sell? You know, so we let's be up to the customer. And, uh, and, and a lot of people wanted to sell that, that short course. One thing about sailing the Cove Island course is you do spend a lot of time in the middle of the lake where you can't see anything. You just start the race and there's, you know, 200 and some boats around you. And as everyone fans out across the lake and starts making their way up to the course, you'll find yourself in a position where you may not see anyone around you for miles and miles, no shore or anything. So there is some, uh, it's kind of nice to go up the shore course because you get to the, the shore why we were showing that or on the short course last year, we could see fireworks coming from the shore, the distant, different municipalities yeah. along the way. But uh, it gives you time to, to bump back into some of the other competitors uh, that are going up the course. And, and uh, it makes for, more, uh, I mean, you can see some of the people you're racing against instead of just on the time frame. That's uh, kind of interesting for me. I've sailed this race 18 times and I've never sailed the short course. And I guess maybe somebody will take me along someday before I get too old to <laughs> take nourishment, but uh, you're right. The Cove Island course, everyone, did, the whole world disappears. You have 8, 10, 12, 14 guys on the boat, and that's the whole world for many hours. It is. And then you start seeing boats as you get to the island, they disappear again as you see the top of the lake. The finish line. Last year you changed the finish line, Carl. It used to be at Mission Point, right. kind of on the what, the southeast corner southeast of Mackinac, corner of the, and of now the, you've moved it to the southwest corner. Yes. Why was that move made, and, and did people like it? Uh, the thought was at the time we, we did get sponsorship through the Grand Hotel, and it was thought that at that time it would be better to move the finish line, uh, par partly because we had lost some of the area with, with the Mission Point. Uh, there was also a uh, faction that, that would like to try a new starting line. It worked finish better. Finish line. Finish line, I'm sorry. Uh, that it would work, it work better uh, it is really where the Chicago finish line is at, and both of them are, are cl much closer to the Grand Hotel, or the finish line is closer to the Grand Hotel. And it is, we're, we're going to try it for a few years. Uh, one year is not enough time, I don't believe, to, for us to determine whether it's the right or wrong place to be. We've got to wait for a few more years to see what the weather is going to produce for us and, uh, and a variety of other activities. But right now, we're going to keep the finish line where it's at. It's six-tenths of a mile further west than it was at Mission Point. And we had no, very few complaints last year. 
about the finish line location. So in keeping with uh, Commodore Kent's uh, and the board's uh, mission, we're going to maintain the consistency, and which I think important thing that we, we are looking at is that consistency, and that's part of it. And the finish line you used last year and will use again this year is very close to where the finish line was in 1925 when this yes. race all started, right? Yes. Yep. One of the people have said to me is to get back to the harbor after I finish the race at the, what I'll call the, the Grand Hotel finish line, I have to go back through the fleet that's still racing. Was that a problem? Did he last year? We did not hear any adverse uh, comments to that fact. Uh, and, I, and I think that overall the fleet does get spread apart most of the time. I've, I've, we've had occasions where we've had, you know, 50 or 60 boats finish within an right. hour of each other. But generally speaking, the boats uh, do spread out so that, that having boats come back through the fleet is not, not a problem at this moment. Seems to me if you're no, good enough to sail the race, you ought to be able to get back to the harbor <laughs> without back. running into somebody who's still racing. You, but uh, to speak a little bit more about that, we've had a lot of cooperation from the Shepler family, Chris Shepler in particular. Um, they are a sponsor of our race. Uh, they've been a part of Bayview for, I can't tell you how long the Shepler family has, but it's been a great ship. They've gone out of their way to make arrangements with all of the ferry owners to try to make sure that they're conscientious about the weight that the commercial traffic uh, pos uh, poses for the, right. the sailors, and they they try they're trying hard to s and make a, a little wake as possible. But you're going to come through a wake or a couple of waves somewhere down that race course, and I wouldn't I hope that's not going to deter you at the very end just to have a couple more. It's part of the game. It's part of the race. Yeah. The Shepplers, of course, are the Shepplers company in in Mackinac City and Saint Nicholas. Just for those who. Yes. And you mentioned the Chicago race. The Chicago race and the Bayview race are on back-to-back -back weekends. Can you alternate? Is that right? Yes, we do. So Last year, Chicago was second. We were first. This year, we're, f we're second, and they are first. So we switch back and forth each, each year. Tell me, what kind of cooperation do you have with the Chicago Yacht Club, your counterparts, in things like safety regulations and can he clean the island, that sort of thing? Uh, right now, uh, we're working hand-in-hand -hand with Chicago Yacht Club to develop the uh, MSR, which is the um, Marine uh, or, uh, the safety, safety safety Regulations, or Mackinac Safety Regulations. And we used, to, we used to do them separately. We would do our own, Chicago would do their own. But it was felt that over time, uh, the boats raced this, basically the same races one week apart why not include all that as into one so that's what they've done the msr is uh, done by chicago does most of the work we take a look at them we have people that, that look at and uh, will agree or not agree you know with some things that are on there so it's a it's an evolving document it keeps uh it keeps getting better every year but it's a document now yes. two documents it is exactly because one of the things that sailors used to say to me is why do i need a this on one saturday Right. And of that, on the next Saturday, why can't I have one list? And so we have one list now. And that's really, and that's what started it. That was the impetus to get it going, was to take care of getting those. We were doing dual things and really kind of the same safety uh, issues, but with different items. So So we're back to the customer, Commodore. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And, uh, you know, they've, uh, this, this measure has made it much more uh, simple and economic economic for, for everyone involved. They can share the similar, similar equipment for both races. And uh, one of the problems was trying to find out one or two things in the regulations that were different from both of them and make sure you comply. Because at the end of the race, for both races, there could be uh, inspections for your vessel to make sure you're complying with those safety regulations. Um, and uh, you wouldn't want to sell that whole race and get to the end and find out you don't comply and therefore you don't qualify to sail the race. So it's really kind of an honor system. Is that the way it works? Nobody comes and inspects my boat before the race to decide if I'm eligible to race? You can ask for a courtesy inspection, and the inspection committee will try to make that effort to come out. And, and that way you can pick up on items that you may be lacking that you could you can uh, pick up and get. Um, for a long time, we did not have that ability. We do now. Or they're, they're, it's open to the membership. 
but I don't have to have my voting. No, no. I sign a statement to say I've raced this race in compliance with the with the regulations and the rules. Is that right? That's and, it. It's a you know, Corinthian sort of thing. I was going to say our sport is a Corinthian sport. Thank you. There's many ways or many places in our sport that requires you to be honest about how you're conducting the race, and uh, one of those is the safety equipment that's necessary. Uh, it's a random inspection only. Uh, conducted for those that are finishing. Uh, and so you don't know if you're going to be inspected or not. So it's even to have that there. Um, you know, but talking about uh, some of the other cooperation that we had with Chicago, uh, we mutually share a trailer that uh, for the finish line uh, and, and a number of things like that. So I just want to say that it's very important for our quality to ha happen with Chicago Race, uh, just for the competitors and uh, for the race officials, uh, it's, it's key. Well, again, if you're sharing equipment as well as information on the island, uh, at the end of the day, that has to keep contain the cost of, 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 of producing this race a little bit, right? It, it does. It's it all back to a, the customer? It's a big, big factor. It's not cheap to race a Mackinac race. We have, you know, they have the entry fees. You have to get your crew certain places. There's uh, there's dockage on the, not dockage on the island, but there's possibly hotels and food and all this stuff. And not to mention the race equipment we've already talked about. So there's there's a lot to the race, uh, and there's uh, there's a lot of uh, help out there for those that are new to the race or some of the cruising boats who want to cruise to Mackinac for their first time. Uh, there's a lot of help, uh, whether you're from Chicago or from Bayview, uh, to make sure that you get the assistance to know what kind of racing gear, where to get it. Uh, the most economical way to be able to put your, your campaign together to get up to. So uh, there's a lot of help for people when it comes to that. And then to add one more thing to that was we got excellent sponsorship. So sponsorship, important sponsorship is important. I mean, it, we, we couldn't, to be very honest with you, and I think Kent would agree with this, we couldn't do this race without sponsorship. It's just, yeah, it's gotten to the point where it's grown so large. Uh, we have so many people behind the scenes that are helping out. All the racers that participate, yes, we have entry fees, and they do defray a lot of the costs. But a lot of other costs are such that we have to find other ways to uh, cover those uh, so that we can continue doing the race and doing it on a yearly basis. So and your title sponsor, Bell's Beer. Bell's Beer has, has been a, a very what excellent. A, what a great marriage absolutely. between a, an historic Michigan event, Michigan sponsor, Bell's Beer. Yeah, it has been great. I was fortunate enough to be able to sail with Larry Bell yes. on his first Mackinac race on the ship Details, which is a 70-foot uh, Santa Cruz boat uh, out of uh, Bayview here. Uh, Lance Smotherman owns the boat. Yep. And, Trish. and uh, Larry was so enthusiastic on his first race. I mean, he had a smile the whole time, chipped right in, and we worked his butt off. Uh, he spent a lot of time on the dual grinders. Those are if you've seen it on TV, there's a big double grinder that uh, usually put two football players on that, that really uh, use that then to power multiple winches on the boat. And, uh, and Larry jumped right on that, and uh, we worked him until he sweat really hard. He didn't just ride along. No, no, he did not. Uh, and he was really hooked. Yeah. Tell me about tracking. This race historically has been something that, you know, for years and years, nobody knew where anybody was. And, and now it's possible for me to sit at home, free, to get online and track any boat or any number of boats. You're doing that again? Yes, we are. And we've, uh, we've uh, commissioned Yellow Brick, who has been our uh, source for uh, tracking for the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. They're going to do it again this year. Excellent company, have done a great tracking, and you're right. I've sat and uh, watched on computer, and I've watched a couple of boats uh, they get the funny little crown on them, and you know they're in first place, and that's where they're going. So, that's remarkable. Uh, the neat thing is that uh, for a long time, and I've worked the harbor, and uh, we always ran into a situation where the wives would come up and ask, uh, I think my husband is in? Well, what boat? Oh, no, they're still back out on the lake. That was the only way that they were able to figure out where, where they were. So now you can go to your TV set, go into your uh, computer, and, and uh, call up a program, and there it is. And the tracking is, is continuous all the way through the whole race, and so it's neat. And it's free. Yes. It's just there. Yes. And the scoring is a long way. I can remember at Mission Point where we used to get kids to run paper sheets up the hill to the, to the resort yep. so that somebody could 
put in the information and then somebody else checked the information and it didn't go anywhere and let hard copy and mail it or email it. No, basically the finish line uh, takes the time and it goes automatically to the uh, scoring program and gets logged in and it's it's there. So similarly, I can sit at home and see instantaneously updated results. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Like Yellow Brick follows our the books tracking, yacht scoring uh, will follow the scores of the event. It's remarkable. I've actually sat at the finish line it is. and watched the boat finish, seen its finish time posted around the world before the boat had gotten its sails down to motor into the harbor. Congratulations, guys. That's that's really great. Let's talk for a minute, Commodore. You're Commodore now. You were rear than Vice Commodore. And one of the first things a rear Commodore does in anticipation of three years out is name certain key people for his his year, yeah. including the Mackinac chairman. What were you looking for? Well, uh, for somebody who's obviously sailed the race quite a few times, uh, you know, it's important that you can find someone with uh, an organizational background and they can work well with others. They have to, you know, it's like herding cats kind of when you try to herd all these sailors around and, and get them organized. It, it's a big job. It's a very big job. Uh, and it's something that we don't take lightly here at Bayview. Uh, next to being Commodore, I think that's probably one of the next most important positions we have here at the club. Uh, well, besides Jerome at our bar. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, besides Jerome, it's most important here at our club. And you picked Carl. How how long ago was that? And how how how, how long have you been rear commodore when you started asking when you asked Carl to, to take the job? You recall? Uh, I think it was within the first month or so of me, uh, maybe the first month or two of me being uh, elected to the position. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where that position you have to be active a year or two prior to you actually serving as chairman. Uh, just the knowledge that you need to be able to convey is, is immense. There's so much. You think you know, but you really don't. You know, you, you sell this race. I don't know how. You can, there's guys that have sell this thing 50 times and probably don't understand the idiosyncrasies of what it takes to honestly put the race on. Now, they can race. They can tell you the wind shifts in this harbor. Uh, don't go in there. There'll be no wind after sundown. Uh, be here in the morning. There'll be fresh breeze for you at 14 miles offshore. They know those things, but to know how to get the trailer and how to cooperate, logo, and make sure it's there and set up on time, it's totally different. And it's a year-round job. It is. Carl, how long did it take you to say, sure, I'll do that, Commodore? It took me about two days. It's a big job. It's been a lifelong uh, thought that I would like to try to do it. I've raced, like I say, 26 races. Um, I've also had a very good uh, teacher in helping me uh, grow with the uh, race management. Mm -hmm. I believe you have uh, done a good job of that uh, many years with right. doing the uh, National One Design Regatta out here on the lake. And, um, and then when Kent asked, I, I did give it a day's, day's thought uh, with, and talked it over with my wife and I decided, you know what, it's time to the sport. We've been doing that for the last uh, five or six years, both on our uh, racing our yeah. boat and with young kids, uh, juniors getting into the racing. So I thought that was a good thing to do. It's, so, and it's the right thing. So you've been at it now for a couple of years? Yes. Any bigs, anything you, you discovered that you didn't realize was involved? I've been meaning to tell Kent that I'm going to uh, retire and uh, leave. <laughs> 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 no. Uh, consistency has been one of our big big situations we've talked about your program that's been a, a real plus uh, we've had some minor little things that uh, have happened uh, uh, some issues with uh, the protest committee last year you know what those are types of things that that you're always going to have with big big regattas like this and we can overcome them and, and uh, get better and grow with them uh, moving the finish line was was a big move really for us and that seems to have worked out, at least uh, right now. Um, everything else seems to be moving. We're, we're, we've got all of our people in place. Um, one of the things that I think is, is paramount is our volunteers, the people behind the scenes. We've got to keep those people going, got to keep them happy, and they'll come up and help. And um, 
it, you know, it's, it requires a couple hundred people just to run the race in the background. Well, and logistically, you have work to be done here at Bayview. Yes. You have work to be done in Port Huron. Right. And you have more work to be done on Mackinac Island. And isn't it true that there are some people who may uh, put in time at one place and never get to the others? True. That can happen. So it's big and it's complex. Yep. Yep. Have there been any days where you've wiped the sleep out of your eyes as you put your feet on the first time and said, why in the world did I take this job? Yes, there have. Yes. I, I think we would be crazy not to say that. I mean, I, like Kent made, made the comment, it is, it is probably the second largest uh, job in the club. And, you know, I've, I've been charged with, with running the race, trying to get the race going. It's something that has been going on for, it's going to be the 89th running this year. Uh, it's been around way, be long, way before I was ever born. And it's something that our, my kids and my grandkids are going to enjoy a long time from now. So in order to do that, you've you got to really put the effort into it. I get it. I get it. Yep. I know the feeling. Commodore, will you race this year? I will be racing this year. racing on the ship Legend. Uh, which is owned by uh, Dan and Dave Schreiner. Right. Uh, and I'll be sailing with most of the crew from Burden. We kind of uh, transferred over there. I'll be sailing with Todd Jones, who uh, right. is a nephew of Burt Jones. And, yep, the uh, owner of Burden. The owner of Burden. Now he's so we'll be keeping that in the family, basically. And uh, if I have my way, we'll have uh, both of my sons with us on the, on the same boat for the race. That's, That's a thrill. thrill. It's uh, very exciting. As Carl said, you know, to have the chance to uh, have your kids enjoy it is one thing. but. To have your kids sail with you is another great opportunity. I know about that one too, Commodore. What about you, Carl? You going to sail? No, I'm going to be up. Uh, I'm going to be up the island the whole time. Uh, when I gave up on it, or not gave up, when I quit racing uh, Lure, which is our boat, uh, four or five years ago, I decided that it was time to retire. And uh, physically, I'm not. I'm not 100% where I would like to be. Uh, yes, I would love to sail it. I'd love to race it. Uh, it's 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 in the blood, but I think this is a big undertaking also, and and we're going to be up on the island making sure everything, making sure that we got a well for Kent when he comes in, and uh, we, everything goes w very well uh, when uh, when it's all over with. I'm we can have a we can have a uh, big porch beer when it's all over with and enjoy it. Yeah, it's on the island. I, I can I can race. We keep my head in the game on the boat, not worrying about the island right now. So. Are you both Thank have you. your head in the game? Appreciate that. Different games, slightly different games. You make a great team, I can tell. Thank you for being with us. We'll get back together in the summertime and do a last-minute preview just before your race. Thanks very much. Thanks again, Thank you, Ted. Ted very we'll much. look for you next time right here on Great Lakes Log.